Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. Um, I kind of uh, always on the lookout for a decent deal, so I got these, um, I asked for uh, evaluation from Banggood. Usually they're pretty uh, cooperative to send me stuff for evaluation. Most of the time I pay for my stuff, sometimes I say, okay, I mean, I really don't need it, so uh, let's evaluate it and see how, uh, how it turns out to be. Uh, these little uh, inside micrometers here, they're from uh, 5 uh, millimeters to 30 millimeters. They're inside. Uh, they're supplied the micrometer itself. It's a pretty close copy of the Mitsutoyo model that they have, uh, you know, for many years. The, they supply a 5 millimeter little uh, ring for calibration and they also supply a key for uh, adjusting the thimble here or the, uh, the this ring here too match to the zero position on the on this area there so um am i satisfied about those i mean i i played around with them a little bit and uh, i was kind of a little bit disappointed about the uh, craftsmanship and the uh, quality of them they had to send me a second one because i found the first one to be uh, not exactly up to standards um I'll give you the let's say uh, let's say that I'll give you the final my final note of appreciation uh, at last. Uh, if I had to buy one for uh, high precision, high uh, high quality, and uh, high and very strict tolerances, uh, I mean uh, forget those. I mean they're not uh, they're not up to the task. For very low budget uh, hobbyist or very low budget uh, shop. That could be, if your talents don't have to be very tight, I mean, that could be uh, still usable. They repeat okay, but um, the main issue I found is the uh, the jaws here. First first time they sent me something, I found that, uh, how can I say that? The, um, the r there was one ring that wasn't uh, mm, great, but uh, I'll explain a few things later about the rings, the uh, calibration rings. Um, the jaws here are more or less uh, not exactly these this side here and this side here it's not parallel to uh, no they're not parallel to one another so when you may want to make some measurements with those you may end up with something like this here so uh <coughs> This is the inside of a this cross section of a ring a calibration ring or any uh, any uh, bore you want to make and measure. So these are the two jaws, the opening in the middle, and this here. I, I mean, it's greatly exaggerated, though. But it's just to show the uh, for the purpose of showing the uh, what happened in what's happening here. Um, there's only one part here that touches inside the ring. There, on very good quality uh, instruments and tools, you would be having much more. Uh, let's say a, b a, w a m way better parallelism between those uh, those two parts here so this means that uh, usable to a point where if you uh, put the apex there or the um, the widest part of the jaws there and you always rely on this part i mean you could get you know some reading decent reading i would say uh, not exactly as reliable as a well-built tool though um how did I find this out? Let's, I'll show you something on the uh, little microscope because uh, you can, just before we go to the little microscope, you can adjust those with the, um, the little rings here. You just put inside there. Let's, uh, okay, make it smaller so we can get it there. And you calibrate. You get your zero and your let's say you can make measurements but uh, always try to get the widest or the narrowest part or whatever i mean uh, that would be the widest part sorry because the narrowest part will never touch so you can rely on this part that being wider at the tip there you always measure on the tip there and you can make something let's say half repeatable uh, not too bad you I mean it's usable but not optimal let's say okay um if you want to get a good instrument for, uh, you know, getting good good readings and good, uh, you know, good calibration, this is a this ring here is a, it's a calibrated and certified uh, certified calibration and everything, two hundred 
uh, 200 thousandths of an inch and I'm using this with this internal uh, micrometer. I'll give you close-ups of this and you see how this works because this this here is uh, from a set and they all set uh, for those with different uh, with the different ranges. Uh, it's something like a few thousand bucks. So you can see the difference in craftsmanship and everything between a thirty dollar instrument and maybe I don't know five five six seven hundred hundred dollar instrument. Uh, the ring and the uh, micrometer itself included. So. Uh, there is a point where you can say you uh, you get what you pay for. Okay, this is a close up of uh, the internal micrometer. Uh, th th they cannot be three point uh, inside micrometers at these uh, ranges. But see the uh, little uh, little foot on the side that just comes in and out. And uh, this is a little carbide, solid carbide foot, and the back of the uh, the instrument is also backed uh, with carbide also. And these two surfaces, let's, uh, let's try to handle this uh, with, with grace. This surface with the rear surface here, they got to be parallel. I'll show you this in a few seconds. Okay, this is the internal micrometer supplied by Bain Good. And uh, those surfaces aren't perfectly lined up and perfectly parallel. So uh, this is close, uh, but as close as this camera will go. And uh, we'll see in the uh, future shots, uh, you know, how close we can go. Okay, Let's say now that uh, you don't have any uh, certified or any rings at all, even these uh, cheaper ones, and you want to calibrate this tool here to uh, to be like five uh, five millimeters, let's say, or just whatever whatever it is. Anyway, but I took this Starrett uh, micrometer with the vernier scale on the top, and I made it to be uh, the equivalent of uh, five millimeters. And let's see that uh, how we could calibrate this to have a decent measurement. And there we go. You can use this or just any instrument you want to calibrate. You can use it to uh, let's say get to uh, your measurement. But the problem here is this one is uh, wider at the base here than the tip here, and the other one is the opposite. And uh, see, if I get tight, it's going to be rocking a little bit. I'll give you a, I'll give you a much, uh, much closer view on this in a second. I'm now being on the little microscope. It's not being a super quality microscope, but I got the uh, first micrometer here. Um, the bottom is kind of a opened up as much as it could. So my pivot point is right here on the bottom. And watch the top part of it. There you go. This is wiggling on the top part. Next one, different problem. Similar but different. Let's put this in there. And clicking a little bit to make it uh, to the right point. Come on, you. The camera's got a better point of, point of view than I got. Okay. There you go. Okay, I think I got it. See here, uh, parallelism is not the uh, not the strong point on this. This one's a little bit better, but see, there's still a difference uh, where the, you got some opening on the top there and the. Still there, not a perfect, uh, perfectly made instrument, as opposed to, oh boy, uh, we're all okay. We're all set up here. If I'm trying to move left and right a little bit, the whole, uh, the whole assembly, including the uh, the micro micrometers jaws, are coming, uh, you know, are coming along with it, and see how solid this is in there. There's no pivoting point or anything ever. 
the two surfaces are perfectly lined up. That's the difference between a, uh, I don't know, that's probably a five, six hundred dollars at least instrument ca compared to a very much cheaper one. And by the way, if anyone's interested into that little microscope, I mean, it's a nice tool, not super precise. It doesn't make the best shots in the, uh, in the spot, but uh, for uh, 40 something bucks, I mean, uh, it does what I want it to do. If you want something more, uh, let's see, more accurate, better, be much better picture, you, you're going to be there into the hundreds of dollars. So for 40 something bucks with low stand, I mean, it does uh, nice in the workshop. And uh, this another nice, uh, nice tool because you're going to be needing to uh, unscrew a little set screw here on the th on the thimble here to uh, access the uh, be able to turn around the this little uh, sleeve there. So this little set, uh, very very well made. It's all it's all steel. I mean, uh, sometimes you know you get uh, you get very very good tool this is an exceptionally well done tool i find uh it's got the uh, torx from torx number two to torx number 15. you got slotted uh, and you got the uh, phillips you got three points there you got safety a few safety uh specialized uh, bits and everything it's all metal and let me get it out it's nicely uh Nicely shaped so you can get a good grip on it, three-sided. This little thing swivels there so you can just use it as, a, you know, like a jeweler. Uh, so uh, let's uh, put a yeah, little, uh, everything here is magnetic. You just, uh, there's, there you go, it sticks in there. Uh, it's very well done. The bits, the shape of the bits and everything is exceptionally well done for uh, Chinese stuff and the whole set is about by well, I'd say 16 bucks. This is the uh, aluminum solid case This is probably plastic gets in there click on click out I mean this is appreciable I and mean, I like uh, I like the quality of this By the way, I paid for it. I ordered it and I paid and the uh, the bits fit very good and that's important if you get uh if you use the wrong bits or the uh the shapes on the bits is not good I me mean you strip your screws and it goes uh goes sour from there so put it back in there once you finish get back in the uh, magnetic little slot and ready for next use by the way if you want to buy some of these uh references that you know like uh, very accurate uh, you you may expect whatever you find will be over $100 uh, at least. So um, very well done, uh, you know, uh, calibration devices. Expect to pay the, the price for them. My final thoughts about this tool. Um, if you need something precise, if you need something for uh, close tolerances, forget this. I mean, it's not uh, not aimed for this. Uh, $30 uh, would be decent and uh, could be usable by a uh, home, you know, home shop, uh, hobbyist or a very low budget uh, machine shop. Um, repeatable, more or less. It's not exactly the, uh, the a very well crafted tool, I would say. If I had to rate it from a scale from uh, 1 to 10, 10 being the best. Uh, I wouldn't give, uh, give it more than a four. That's uh, well, maybe being generous a little bit, but four maximum. If you really need the high precision, get yourself these uh, these micrometers. They're uh, much more precise. They're much more accurate, much more, uh, let's say, they're be better built. Craftsmanship on this is can't compare to the other ones. And uh, but the price either can compare thirty bucks for something like this, and four, five, six hundred bucks for those. If you get a set like a uh, set like this with four of those, you go uh, from two hundred thousand to uh, about uh, four hundred thousand. I mean, you, you got a range of uh, about fifty thousandths of an inch per uh, per tool 
which is a little bit over a millimeter, uh, you pay a few thousand bucks. So uh, I guess it's a thing. It's it's a think it over in the budget. But one tool I can recommend today is these little screwdrivers, which I'm very happy. I've used them, you know, quite a lot so far, and I uh, had a chance to appreciate their quality and the the, the craftsmanship of those. I mean, it's. Uh, one of those tools that I would give a nine, uh, nine out of ten at least, and it's uh, very well done. I use the uh, Torx. I think it's the number two or three in some uh, very small uh, devices and things. And the bit fits very nicely in the screw in the in the head, and uh, you don't you don't break. You can use quite a lot of strain and you don't break the screw. So one item that's very good, nine out of ten, and the other ones, like I say, four out of ten still adaptable it could be fixed someone with lots of uh, patience and uh, a good methodology could just do a good grind and make them parallel if you get, if you can succeed into making this these jaws parallel you would have a decent tool i would say but i'm not going i'm not go i'm not going to go uh, bother doing this i don't need that tool for myself so uh, i got better tools i got uh, different tools so i'll be uh, i'll be using that uh, for uh, different purposes so uh, just stay with me because these are metric and they could be used by uh, by uh, let's say imperial uh, minded people i'll show you a recipe to maybe get uh, convert your things because i haven't seen any of those into the uh, imperial versions so uh, give me a few seconds to set up, set up and i'll give you a little uh, recipe for uh, metric to imperial and vice versa Going from inches to millimeters is not that hard. So every t every everybody needs to know that one inch equals 25.4 uh, millimeters. So you need to find out how many millimeters it is. You take the value in inches and you multiply this by 24.5. So that will give you the value in millimeters. As the other way around, you need to find out how many inches a certain amount of millimeters will do. So you get the value of millimeters divided by 25.4. So that will give you the value in inches. As an example here, 200 thousandths of an inch. Uh, how many uh, millimeters does it do? So 200 thousandths, 0 0 0.200, 0, multiply by 25.4, which is our constant to translate from one to the other. It's 5 millimeters and 800 of a millimeter and the other way around you got five millimeters and you divide by 25.4 exactly like this one here the value in millimeters divided by 25.4 that will give you one hundred ninety six thousandths and eight tenths of an inch this one here is a half a tenth of a thousand so this is pretty uh, pretty much smaller so this will give you a very, uh, very exact uh, translation, and kind of a uh, easy to be uh, to be used. Oh, my dad, I...